Hello again, everyone. Ken from Whittling Woods, back again with another Whittling Wood Carving tutorial. Today, we're going to do something that's really fun and quite actually a satisfying uh, little whittle to do. We're going to actually do it on, we'll do two of them. We'll do one in this piece of basswood and one in this piece of eastern white pine. I think for the eastern white pine, we'll, we'll, we'll use the old Stanley 199 and for the, um, for the, uh, Butternut, we'll use um, this uh, kind of homemade, it used to be a boning knife, we'll use this here knife. Um, just for reference sake, um, the eastern white pine is an inch and an eighth, you can see here, inch and an eighth. And I believe that the, the length of the piece isn't, isn't uh, the issue, I'm just leaving enough to hold it. It looks like about six inches and the butternut is an inch and a half. And just for reference sake, it's about uh, like four and a half inches long. But again, that, that's not critical because we're just leaving a little extra. The mushrooms are going to carve or are going to be smaller than that, but uh, we'll leave ourselves something to hold on to. And maybe for a base for the mushroom as well. So anyway, these are really fun carvings. Another kind of carving you can't mess up. Um, they're, they're just really kind of almost satisfying to do. So you'll have a lot of fun, I think, uh, giving these a shot. I'm going to get everything set up and and uh, I'll be right back. Maybe we'll start with um, with the eastern white pine, and then we'll do the uh, we'll do the butternut. They sh they they don't take too too long. Alrighty, be right back. Okay, we're going to start with this eastern white pine. We're going to do a little kind of like a morel type mushroom, I guess. Um, and uh, it's pretty real simple to do. Uh, we're just going to basically start just taking it down. They're a little longer, so you're just going to go around and. And take it down. Um, these are super, super great beginner whittles. You, you can't, <laughs> you can't go wrong with these. And they're like I said, they're they're kind of fun to do. So you're just going to kind of go around and and taper it down a little bit. You'll see the little picture up over here with what a, the finished product looks like. So you see what we're aiming for. It's really simple. Um, I'm going to kind of just speed through this process here because this is all I'm doing. I'm just going around, rounding it out. All right, let me just speed through this and I'll be right back. Okay, you can see we just kind of rounded it out a bit. Um, in case everybody's wondering, this here is a little stop box stop block you can you could uh you know put your piece on it and and uh, actually i just realized I, I i didn't even anchor it down yet <laughs> there we go uh don't forget to anchor your stop block down anyway just a piece of eastern white pine um clamped to my workbench here and you can kind of i mentioned it in my last video kind of acts like a, a third hand it's kind of nice you can put a piece up against especially bigger bulkier pieces it gives you just a little bit more purchase when you're when you're taking the, you know, taking the longer cuts like this. Anyway, uh, next we're going to do is kind of start to round over the top a little bit and just kind of go around, take these little, little cuts here. Just kind of round over the top, remove any saw marks um, on the piece, uh, on the end grain there. And you know, in case everybody's wondering, I, I buy this uh, Eastern White Pine at one of the uh, one of the big box stores, and it's labeled as Eastern White Pine, um, not uh, not like a. Um, of Doug fir or anything like that. It's 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 a pine, so it's 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 relatively easy to carve. Actually, in fact, it's it's very simple to carve. Um, it holds detail okay. You can check back a few videos I've done using this. It it'll hold detail pretty good. It's a decent alternative to basswood if you can find it. Like I said, I live in the Northeast, so I guess it's probably a little bit more readily available around here. Um, but there you go. We're just kind of taking it down a bit. And then for the um, for the base of the piece, uh, we're going to establish you know how long we. Um, you know, the, the size of the, uh, the mushroom and um, kind of go from there. Then, uh, so we'll say, you know, right about here maybe, we'll just put a uh, little stop cut 
and start cutting up to that stop cut. We're going to go take it around each corner. Kind of go in here and just take it down a bit. That's all. We're going to you know, form this, I guess it's called the stem of the mushroom. Um, And these are kind of cool. What I what I'm <laughs> what I'd like to do is um, is little. I like doing these. They're they're fun to do and they're so easy. You know, like I said, it kind of like uh, if you check back, I did a uh, little evergreen tree a couple videos back, um, and uh, that's another super easy one to do. These are even easier. If you're if you're just getting into whittling and you just you know want to um, you know you want to kind of get a feel for it and see if you like doing it. And then you're maybe not that interested in carving little figures. Um, these are, this is a great place to start. And honestly, even if you are interested in eventually carving little figures, this is still a great place to start because you can actually get a, uh, the, a, this project done relatively easily. Um, and it, they're pretty cool when you, they don't require a lot of finish work. You can paint them up. You can, you know, uh, do whatever you want uh, as far as um, the, uh, the look of it goes, but um, <clears throat> they're mushrooms. So there's quite a bit of variation. Um, just trying to even out that a bit. So we're just gonna kind of go around and start taking down the bottom of the mushroom and then we're gonna start forming the stem. And that's it, I mean, you can see how, how easy this is to do. And I'm using two things that you can, to do this, that you can pick up uh, in, in one of the big box stores, a Stanley 199. Um, if you're interested too about, about how I get this going, there is, a, I did a video about uh, wood carving knives and I talked about the Stanley 199 and how I, how I do the sharpen the blades and um, and um, so you know, check it out if you're interested in in that. Some people uh, some people want to give the the Stanley a try, and um, hopefully that video kind of shows you how how I do it. We're just going to kind of go around here and narrow the. I'm going to keep calling it a stem um, because I guess that's what it is. Undercutting the main top of the mushroom here. So I'm not going to bore you with the details. I'm just going to kind of go around. I'll speed through this so you can see what I'm doing. But, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. So let me just speed through this part and I'll be right back. Okay, we narrowed down the base here, you can see, quite a bit. Um, and um, <clears throat> there you go, I'll give you a look at, at the whole thing there. We'll start establishing the uh, bottom part of the mushroom. And uh, for that, I just kind of find out where I want the, the, the bottom to end. And again, no measurements, don't worry about it. It's a mushroom, they, they grow in, in, in various ways, so we're... <laughs> It's the, that's the nice thing about this type of project is is such a um, free form kind of thing to do, and honestly, I, I think they're kind of cool when they're when they're done. They they look kind of fun, and uh, I think what I'm going to do is um, make a little scene. Actually, we'll do a few mushrooms, or I'll do a few mushrooms. Uh, we'll do a couple in this video, but maybe you know I'll, I'll do another. We'll do another one or so and uh, next week uh, we'll come back and maybe we'll carve a little little gnome character <clears throat> and the little gnome guy can uh, hang out around the mushrooms we'll do a little whole little scene here so this week we'll work on the, the mushroom and next week uh, the little gnome so if you're interested uh, check that out at least that's my plan things do change but um, you know, if you're interested, well, and, and let me know in the comments if you're interested or if you're, you know, rather see something completely different than, um, 
and let me know that too. Sometimes it helps. Um, I, I try to, like I said, I, I try to make the, the videos approachable for, for beginners. So, because um, I, I think that people who watch this kind of video are, are starting out and they want to know. They want to know how to, uh, how to do, how to, how to whittle. And, um, and so we, we, the way I approach it is to, or at least I try to, is to show fairly simple projects that you can do that improve your, your overall skill and make you a better, you know, more comfortable with, with knives. And I try to show different types of knives, different types of wood, because not everybody has access. One of my viewers mentioned he lives in um, um, India, I believe, and um, he doesn't have access to bass wood and, and particular whittling knives. So, um, um, you know, it's, it's great to have, uh, um, you know, to, to see, no, I oh, agree. It's, it's maybe helpful to see someone using different types of, uh, different types of wood other than just bass wood. And again, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, uh, saying bass, basswood's not a good choice. It's an excellent choice, especially for figure carving. It holds great detail. It's easy to carve. Um, it's, it's very, has very little grain in there. So you, you can, um, you can paint it and it looks real good. So, um, but not everybody has access to it. So we'll try different types of woods. And knives. And you can see, look, look how, look how we're moving along here. I'm just going around. And you can see the base of mushrooms. They kind of round out on the bottom. So that's all we're doing. That's all I'm doing. I'm just rounding out the base a bit. And um, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bore you with those details because you, you can, you can see. And like I said, this is a, this is a, this is a great project for anybody. Whether you're, whether you're a wood carver and you have lots of skill. Um, or you're an intermediate carver, or you just want to try something different, um, or you're a, you never whittled before and you're, you're thinking about getting into the hobby, I would recommend you start with a little mushroom like this. I don't know why I haven't done one earlier. Um, so then I'm going to kind of go back and start. It just makes it easier once you take away some of this bottom part here to, to start to narrow the base out a bit more. Or the stem, I guess, again, I'm calling it that. All right, I'm gonna just kind of keep doing that and I'll be right back. back give you a look at the whole piece here so far you see how easy that is to do I'm gonna keep rounding I'm gonna go back now and start rounding the top a little bit um, maybe tapering it in a little bit on the bottom over here you know just just try to go with uh, you know, just go with it don't don't uh, get caught up you know if you want look at a few pictures uh, online see what they look like and, um, but, you know, like I said, it's a mushroom. Do it whatever way you like. Okay, for, for rounding the bottom of the base, just kind of tapering it in a little bit. Okay, do you, do you have to do it that way? Nope, you can, I'm just kinda going with what I think looks interesting on this. Sort of like so. And then what I like to do, because if you look at the morel mushroom, you know, they actually are really textured and they have a lot of grooves and, and facets to them and, and little recesses. Well, we're, we're obviously not going to carve all those tiny little recesses, but we're going to sort of do something that I think um, is a good alternative. Put all these little facets 
You can see I'm just kind of going through and taking these little, little kind of scooping cuts here all around. And, and go, be random about it. And then what we're going to do is once we get a, enough of those in there, all those little facets, they're going to be kind of little raised areas. In our painting of this one, we're going to use a highlighting paint to just dry brush over all those facets. And what it'll do, it'll highlight those facets and it'll look like all these, all these uh, interesting little um, grooves and, and what have you. So it'll give kind of the, the, the feel of a morel type mushroom. Um, again, you know, I'm not... These are not exactly where because these are just fun little whittles and just kind of an interesting way to do it. But that's all I'm doing here. I'm not going to uh, sit here and, and make you watch all that because it's, you know, you could see it's just kind of going through. You take your knife and you just take little, little cuts like that, little scooping cuts. So you're going to go in and kind of just flick it up, you know, to remove that little chunk of wood. That's all. That's all you're doing because you're you want to create. You can kind of see here a little bit from the from the shadow, all the little facets. It'll it'll. I think it'll help when you paint it um, to to give that to look. And again, it's so easy to do. And the nice thing about the uh, wood in general is it's it already kind of when you do this, it it you know has that natural look obviously to it. So it it really adds to the to the, to the effect. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to continue doing that and then we'll come back and finish this one up. Okay, I went through and I added uh, just a bit of facets to it. For the base of the thing, we're going to come back here and we're just going to go with our knife and, and just start to kind of round that over, create some facets on the bottom as well. You might want to wait to do any kind of finish work on the on this part until it, until you're done with the, uh, with the, the base here, the stem. Uh, because you know you're banging up against it, and if you're using a soft wood like this eastern white pine, you'll you know you'll you'll scratch it up. But you know again, it's a mushroom, so those kind of little details actually maybe add to the the, the effect, so to speak. Um, that's all. You really can't get any easier and more fun than this. This is like I said, one of those um, <laughs> one of those just satisfying whittles to do. You can do it anywhere and use any kind of material you want. And in fact, you could, you could, you know, use it just on a, a branch. Um, you, you don't need to use any particular type of, of wood. And if, if you have a decent knife and you can whittle in slightly harder woods, you can use that as well. Um, the natural grain in the wood really adds to the uh, effect. And now for the base here, the bottom here, I'm just going to start going around and just rounding that out a bit. Nothing, nothing too difficult. What we'll do to add some stability is we'll, we'll leave a bit of the um, you know, a little bit of the base on here. Um, that way it'll, it'll, it'll stand up better. Oh, I'll cut it somewhere here, you know, with, with a saw. Now you can also see, I'll just point that out to the advantage of using a slightly longer piece of wood. You can hold it here and your hands well away from, from where you're cutting. So, um, or, you know, it's, it's a little further away, I should say. That's it. I think, other than uh, you know, going around the base here, maybe cleaning that up just a bit to remove some of the cut marks in here. Nothing too dramatic because we can darken the base when we, when we paint this particular one. Maybe we'll use like a you know a, some kind of umber paint just to darken it. I think we can call this one good. I don't want to bore you with that too much more, but uh, there you go. I mean, it's it's pretty, pretty.
pretty straightforward to do and it's kind of a fun little little whittle you can you know you can shape this uh, if you look at pictures of morel mushrooms they come in all different shapes so you know um, go out if you want to put more of a, a curve to it or you know more more interesting uh, shapes again we're keeping this simple and straightforward so uh, so anybody can kind of approach it and kind of understand it without any complexity but you know when you're doing it add your own personal touches to it to make it yours that's look at that it's pretty cool uh, like I said, these are real satisfying uh, little whittles to do. You can kind of go back and, like I said, just just clean up any rough spots that that you see that you you know feel need to be need to be just addressed. Don't worry about it too much. All right, there you go. Mushroom number one done. What I'll do is um, we'll do the next one and then um, I'll paint uh, this one up. Uh, I'm just gonna I'll, I'll put up uh, just some basic uh, colors in here, but I'm gonna show you later on uh, towards the end here if you're interested uh, in, in the dry brushing of what I'm talking about. Um, so if you're interested, I, I'll if I re, if I remember I'll put timestamps in the video because you know you might not want to watch uh, all of it and that's that's cool. I'll put a timestamp so you can get right to the uh, dry brushing if that's what you're interested in. Um, but um, there you go. Next one, uh, we're going to bring out the the beautiful um, butternut and uh, the other whittling knife, and uh, we'll we'll tackle that one. Alrighty, be right back. Okay, we're back with our piece of uh, butternut. And we're going to do the same thing we did on the other one. We're just going to start taking down. This one's not going to be as, um, you know, the, the top's not going to be quite as uh, long as the other one. We're going to add a little bit more detail to the stem part. So this one we're going to just start to, I like to go around, just round out the corners first. Again, this one's going to be a little bit more like a cap. So go around. start rounding it out all right I won't um, make you sit through all that so I'll just kind of fast forward through this part here and you can kind of see what I'm doing but you don't have to endure the whole part it's I'm, I'm teasing it's, it's fun to do but uh, um, for the sake of making the video uh, more watchable for people I'll, I'll speak through this section all right be right back Okay, you can see we just kind of went around and rounded out the uh, the top. Um, another reason why these are good beginner um, whittles is because it, if you're interested in doing little figure carving or anything like that, um, these are something you're going to be doing a lot of rounding out uh, pieces, rounding up tops and all that. So um, it's a little more difficult when you're dealing because it's end grain and you're cutting you know, right a uh, right through the the, uh, the fibers. You're not cutting, you know, you're not cutting along them as you would be on the side here. Um, so you're cutting, um, you're, you know, you're you're cutting them, <laughs> um, you know, perpendicular uh, to the to the way they grow. So it's a little, it can be a little bit uh, a little bit harder to do. But um, you know, it's something you're you, if you're into this hobby, you're going to be dealing with. So this is a great way to kind of uh, practice your skill and rounding out um, the um, <clears throat> rounding out pieces too it kind of helps because it's it sometimes it's the beginning of a lot of different little whittles that you may do <clears throat> okay uh, next thing we're going to do we're going to come down uh, I guess maybe about right here and we're going to start forming the, the bottom of the mushroom cap I believe that's what they're called um, and as far as the type of mushroom 
and we did a morel uh, on the last video, or excuse me, last video, the first part of this video. Uh, this one here, um, I, it has no name. I'm just making it up. So um, I'm just using this lovely butternut. If uh, I don't know if anybody's used butternut, I'm, I'm sure you have. Uh, it's it's definitely harder to carve than than basswood or as we use in the in the first part, the eastern white pine, but it's an absolutely lovely wood. And this is one that you really um, <clears throat> don't paint. I mean, there is a case where, and uh, I did uh, a mushroom uh, with this butternut and a kind of a morel stock mushroom, and I did a dry brushing on it. I didn't paint it, but I just did a dry brushing to bring out some of the... Uh, some of those facets and I, I think it came out okay I think it's a, it's a you could definitely do that I wouldn't I wouldn't apply you know opaque paints to a uh, piece of butternut the wood itself is just is, is really it's a it's quite a nice wood so anyway we're, we're doing the same thing we did on the other one so um, I'm just gonna go around form the form the cap and then we'll start thinning out the um, this the stem part here so you can see I did the cap and I'm going to, just going to come back in here and start to thin out the part for the stem so I I'm going to speed through this because you see me do it on the first one and you and you you know I'm sure I don't need to watch it again you, you've got it down by now but um, so let me do that I'll be right back Okay, I just thought I'd jump back in here. Um, I'm gonna do the stem on this one a little bit different. I'm gonna do it in two parts, kind of put a little skirt, I guess. Uh, you, yeah, I've kind of seen mushrooms that have this little skirt that come that are right underneath the cap. Um, so I'm going to uh, leave a little bit on the top portion of the stem um, to, to do that. And um, just, just if, you're, if you're following along and you're you know doing the same uh, type of mushroom, then uh, that's that's. I'm going to leave a little bit here just to just to get that uh, look. I, you know, again, you, you don't have to do that part, but I, you know, I figured the last one we didn't do that, and I've seen mushrooms that have that type of uh, a skirt. I I'm sure there's a, a technical name for it, but <clears throat> I'm just going to round out the the cap a bit more. It's still a little squared off on the sides here. You can see the use, the help, how beneficial having a stop lock in. You can really, uh, it really helps. You can, I, I mentioned it like, uh, like I said, it's, it's sort of like a, sort of like a third hand. It's, it's, it helps uh, secure your piece. And I, I, you know, it definitely makes, makes it a little safer too when you're carving a big, you know, when you're taking big, big uh, slices of wood off. Um, But that's all I'm doing here. I'm just I'm just going around, rounding, rounding the cap out a bit, and um, I will uh, finish that up, and I'll be right back. Okay, went through, just kind of you know did some rounding on the top, as much as as little as you like. What I like to come in here and start to do is undercutting the uh, base. In this case, I'm just going to take this back just a little bit more. So I'm just gonna kind of, kind of come in here and you know, so it's sort of if you're looking at it like this, it's not it's not uh, like that. It, or excuse me, it's not the angle at the base is in, in this direction. It's more in that direction. If if you can see what I'm referring to, you know, again, it's it's <laughs> do it any way you want. Um, I'm just. Just kind of doing that. Some mushrooms have that to where they, you know, the cap is is uh, kind of overhangs the the stem a little bit. So um, 
I'm just kind of going through and doing a little bit of an undercutting, that's all. Do it any way you, you know, do it any way you like. Um, that's what I've said. These, I'm kind of just, these are more videos to, you know, if you're thinking of something else to, to whittle, you can kind of say, hey, you know what, I'll, I'll give a mushroom a try. <clears throat> or like I said, if you're brand new, definitely, if you're brand new, give this a shot. It's fun to do. And uh, I think you'll, you'll really... You really enjoy the the, the, uh, the whole process. All right, you kind of see what I'm doing here, so um, I'm sure you ain't got the gist of it. I won't uh, bore you with too much of uh, the details here. I'm just going to go through and, and continue a little bit of undercutting. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, work on the stem a bit. Righty, be right back. Okay, there we go. Just a little undercutting. Let's uh, work on the finishing up the, uh, the stem part. So we're going to just thin this out a bit more. And we're going to, you know, the, the same thing we did on the first one. We're going to the bottom's going to be pretty much the same. It's going to kind of be rounded over and sitting on a little base. But like I said, we're going to put a little skirt right up in here. So I'm just kind of getting it ready for that. All right. Let's try it now. So we'll kind of come in here and we'll start to form just a bit of a, like I said, a little skirt. So we'll kind of go around and undercut, uh, undercut a little bit. Put your stop cuts in and just kind of go around. There you go. I'm kind of saying, pretty easy to do. And then we're just going to kind of go around now and start thinning out the uh, the, the balance of the uh, of the mushroom stem. Now I, I'm, it's probably not called the stem, uh, but whatever it's called. So essentially, that's all I'm doing here. Uh, I'm going to start going around here. I'll fast forward through this part. You'll see I'm just I'm just thinning this out just a bit more, um, so we can finish up the uh, stem here. But um, I'll give you kind of a quick look at it. That's where we're at this point. So I'm just going to kind of fast forward. You'll see what I'm doing here. Be right back. Okay, we got the initial part done here uh, to make it a little easier on ourselves. We're going to establish where the, the uh, bottom of the mushroom are gonna, is going to be. So I'm guessing that's, if you look, that's that's probably pretty good for, for uh, stem. We'll cut in here. It's just like we did on the other one. I'm going to form sort of a rounded bottom where the mushroom comes in contact with the ground. So I'm going to go around each edge, put a stop cut in cut up and down to it. You, know, you can kind of see how that's being done here. And then we'll connect, we'll connect all those little little cuts. It's just easier, I think, if you start on the edge like that. <clears throat> Put your stop cut in, cut up to it, cut, cut down to it. All right, 
one more to go. There you go. Now we'll just start, uh, you know, connecting all that up. So we're going to just go around here and it'll form, it'll start to form the base of our little mushroom. And we're going to take it down oh, quite a bit more, but you know, this gives us something to work towards. And it sort of gets a little bit of wood out of our way when we're, when we're narrowing, narrowing the, um, the, uh, the stem here, this part. Excuse all the knocking, you know, and I'm, I'm hitting into the stop lock here. I, I hope that's not too annoying to, to listen to, but um, it really, it really helps. You, you, you get, you get, uh, give it, give it a try if you're, if you're whittling. It, it kind of, it definitely helps you secure your piece even more. Now I'm just going to start rounding off that bottom. So I'm going to kind of come back, start around the corners. And just like we did on the other piece, so um, I'll kind of just fast forward through here so you don't have to go through all that all over again. Alrighty, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm just going to jump back in here. You can see what I said. If you, if you do that little rounding on the bottom here, you kind of get some wood out of your way so you can come back in here with your knife you can kind of see and come back in here with your knife and it'll 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 enable you to to uh, thin out the uh, the piece a little bit more and then you'll start the rounding again and you'll keep working that way in order to thin the piece out just let you get underneath the wood a little bit more that's all and like I said, in the end, um, the mushroom bases are, are kind of like that. But in order to thin it out, that's, that's uh, you know, the, the way I like to do it. This is the nice thing, again, about the stop lock. I can put it here, and I can really put a lot of, I can do a big, nice, nice, uh, nice cut in the wood here. back again and start the rounding the base out we're going to do it you know you do it in, in steps to, to narrow to narrow the the piece uh, down a bit that's all so um, I'm going to just uh, finish that up and I'll be right back okay narrowed the, uh, the bottom of the stem out a little bit there and then uh, now I come back and I kind of just uh, you know maybe Add a little bit more detail to this skirt. It's a little, it's a little big the way it is here. We're just gonna kind of clean that down a little bit. Just kind of go around, and then. Um, the other thing I like to do is just just take these little you can see they're, they're little scooping cuts I just kind of go around and I just go kind of uh, you know, the, the grains running in this direction so I'm just scooping out pieces and like I said this this is kind of a made-up mushroom <laughs> So I don't know if anything, if any of them look like this, but you know, I, mushrooms are, they're all over the place and they all look quite different. So, um, you really, like I said, whatever you do, it's, it's going to look right. So you, it's one of those, um, whittles, like I mentioned when I was in the, um, in the evergreen tree whittle, you, you can't mess them up. So, um. You're always gonna you're always gonna wind up with with something that um, that you like at the end. So they're kind of fun. And again, this is just, that's just adding a little quirky detail to it. You know, maybe I'll 
kind of do this too. Maybe round it off the bottom just a bit. I don't know, kind of making it up as I go. Again, was this this scarp part necessary for this mushroom? No, you could you could have left it out, and like we you know we didn't put one in the uh, last mushroom we did. But that's what I'm saying. I'm just kind of showing you a little different. You want to make it look a little different, you know, something like that. And with that, I think we could just kind of go around. And if you see anything, yeah, you, you like or don't like. You know, now's the time to maybe, maybe I'll put a little kind of scoops in this top part too. I mean, the, the grain itself, as you can see, is, is, is pretty cool looking. So, you know, anything we can do to, to enhance the, the look of it and the grain. And then we're just, we'll just finish this one with, um, with some wax and oil. Um, I'm not going to paint it, obviously. And we'll do the same thing. I mean, it's that's pretty much uh, where we're at in this one. I don't think we can we can put too much more detail in there. Maybe a little bit more undercutting. Take it to whatever level you want. Like I said, you, you cannot go wrong with these. It's a great, great little whittling project to do. It's fun. It's uh, enjoyable. You really just kind of, you don't even have to almost think when you're doing it. You can just go with it. And that's sometimes fun. If they're a hard day of, of uh, work or, or whatever you do, uh, taking care of kids, um, Whatever your 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 life, wherever it brings you, to have these little hobbies and little projects to wind down and relax with, and little widows like this are perfect because they're they're so stress free. You just you just kind of go with it and you create a little thing at the end, and you'd be surprised how people, you know, I've I've given away a lot of the little, that's pretty much what I do. I'll, I'll give them away or, you know, just leave them around, whatever. And people really enjoy them. It, it, it's, it's, they leave them out. They put them on their desk. Um, you know, they put them on shelves. Uh, they're just fun. You know, they're, they're, it's, it's a part of, uh, you know, part of you that you're kind of letting other people experience, so to speak. And uh, you can't say that with too many things. But there you are. This is kind of a fun little quirky little whittle to do. I am going to, um, <laughs> instead of just blathering on here, I'm going to um, uh, finish this one up. And uh, what we'll do is I'll come back with the, um, the little uh, morel that we did. And I talked about doing a dry brushing. So um, I'm going to get this. I'm going to put a little coat of paint on here first before we do that. And this one, just we're just going to, like I said, oil and wax it. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll cut the bases and all that. And then uh, when I'm ready to put the dry brushing on, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back here with the uh, dry brushing technique for the uh, little mushroom, uh, morel type mushroom that we carved. You can kind of see, I, I darkened it with some raw umber, um, the base and, the, <clears throat> and the, the cap of the mushroom. What I'm gonna do now is I have a little, <clears throat> little bit of, uh, here's the paint I'm using for anybody who's interested. Um, <clears throat> that's all. And uh, just take a brush, there's a little bit of paint in here. Just get it on the, tips of the brush like so and then get most of it off just get a uh, paper towel kitchen towel whatever you want to call it and um, get most of it off you don't want it you don't want too much on there sometimes I test it on my on my hand um, but uh, and then you're just going to kind of lightly go across the surface here and 
it'll pick up some of the, it'll start to pick up some of the, uh, you can kind of see there, it's picking up some of the, take your time doing it, you know, it'll pick up some of the, those highlighted areas. We're gonna go back, get a little bit more, and go through that same process again. <clears throat> again, the key is to have a very, a dry brush and not a lot of paint on the brush. And you gotta take your time to do this. Just kinda of go through and and hit those, get those high spots. Just kinda of brush it right across it there. And it'll start to highlight all those little, little facets, like so. Um, you can barely see that, but That's basically that's basically all there is to it. We're gonna just I just do it until I get it to a the shade that I like and a, you know highlight enough of it. And you can see how it's picking up those little all those little highlights and it just creates a, an interesting effect that makes it look more natural. I think uh, more like a mushroom. So um, that's all I'm gonna do. Um, so um, you kind of got the gist of it there. I'm gonna finish that up and I'll be right back. Okay. There you go. You can see the dry brushing kind of highlights, um, you know, all those little little facet uh, edges that we created. Pretty pretty easy to do, and, and you know, like I said, you really can't go wrong. It's kind of fun. Last step I do in, in my in the carbon lines is I'll apply. Um, here you go, Howard's. Uh, I mentioned this a few times. Howard's feed and wax. It's um, basically it's um, you know it's. Um, beeswax and, and orange oil. So it's uh, kind of a good, I'll put a little bit of this on. I kind of brush it in. Oh, and you know, just so you know, the, every, the, it, it's completely dry, uh, the paint. So you got obviously you let it dry before you put this on. Um, and this is your kind of your last step. And I just kind of go through and I, and I just, uh, you know, I'll brush it on, put a couple coats, you let it dry and you can kind of buff it up a little bit. It uh, helps protect the wood and <clears throat> And it's I find it a, a very uh, very nice finish actually um, for these woods. You might you know it's not going to be I don't like putting um, plastic type finishes like polyurethane. Um, if you're going to be handling it a lot, then you know maybe maybe that's that's a better type of finish. Um, but for something like this, you know, um, even though over time it might it might kind of uh, need to be reapplied, that's okay. Um, I can you know. If you have any kind of little thing like this, uh, you know, you can maintain it over time. But whatever, it, it, it lasts a good long time, but that's all. I just kind of put it on, go through and, and cover the whole the whole thing, let it dry, uh, maybe put a couple coats on, and, um, and that's it. So um, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll uh, kind of finish uh, finish this one up and uh, come back and show you the finished product on, on, uh, on these little mushroom whittles. Be right back. Okay, there you go. They're all finished up. I threw a uh, third one in there uh, that I did earlier. Like you could say, these are very quick little projects to do. Great for any skill level. Uh, if you're a beginner, definitely um, a little whittle you can take on and, and knock out. It's uh, it's real simple to do and they're fun. Use any type of wood, any type of knife that you have and, uh, and go at it. So um, there you go. Hope uh, you found that um, helpful. Let me know in the description. And like I said, next week, um, maybe we'll do a little gnome character to to occupy our little uh, mushroom forest over here. Uh, if you want to see that, let me know down in the description. So anyway, um, hope you found that uh, helpful and interesting. And have a great whittling week. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.